all right i'll walk you through the opl here real quick uh, we're on the front in the front room where we have a lot of patches and pictures and things we did over the years uh, that one's not hanging quite straight tps 16 alpha capstone lots of patches things we don't need anymore uh eeg system in flight measurement of eeg kind of a cumbersome method of measuring workload we got a much better method now anyway space shuttle tire here's a commercial flight tech simulator we do quite a bit of work in this one uh mostly things to do with uh, mode confusion flight mode denunciations things of that sort it's uh instrumented so we can measure uh, reaction times and things of that sort this here is a old little flight simulator significant in the sense that this little display um, was the prototype for what later became the Dynon Skyview we licensed that system uh, back in I want to say 2004 here's the uh, L29 that we just flew uh, 22 hours for the have Rhino team last week and the week before from cockpit with a uh, Dynon Skyview uh, we got a bunch of those because we got them when we did the license it's wide display wide area display it's a f-35 display hotas uh, it's a great airplane i'm gonna quickly step up here to give a round robin view here's our command and control bus it's basically a mobile telemetry lab and really command node uh, 211 is our heavily instrumented mi2 hoplite helicopter by the way here's the uh, flight simulator that I showed before uh, the hoplite's a very stable platform it's real easy to fly twin turbine helicopter heated intakes heated windshield pedo probe heat heated blades heated tail rotor so this thing is stacked out and it's got a Black Hawk cockpit that's a cast cockpit uh, common aircraft avionics system it's one half of a Black Hawk it's basically the pilot side and then we have the ability to integrate that with the helmet display you see those helmets uh, in uh, the one that we fly in here is the, the one that I'm wearing in uh, hour five you'll see that there on the outrigger you can pile up any kind of Center. This here is a Hensoltz Ferion LiDAR that's giving us a three-dimensional view of the real world. Over on this outrigger we got uh, some other uh, stuff, uh, cameras in the chin bubble. Uh, this here is actually a, a photometer, a uh, digital photometer that measures brightness levels. Uh, this here is a little hard to see with all the glare, but that's a 5 million ISO color night vision camera. It's really cool. You can see stuff clear as day, but in total brightness. Back cockpit is, or the back crew station is, is just a, a large rack with many things on it that give us a high uh, validity display capability in the front. So we can do just about anything uh, with these displays showing up on the uh, display panel. This here is 110. It's another MI2. Uh, we're in the process of... Uh, Upgrading that with a large format display. Here's a 48 and L29 uh, aircraft. Uh, that one has not a sky view in the front. It actually uses a uh, tactical cockpit avionics, uh, the MFD 268, uh, F-18 HOTAS, switchable to F-16 or F-35. And it's equipped to do live virtual constructive uh, simulation so we can fly these use a tactical data link to connect with our other aircraft or simulators anywhere in the world and we can do air-to-air -air and air-to-ground warfare uh, simulations this is our tug that's a unmanned aircraft a rotorcraft electric rotorcraft um, this one here is classified i can't talk about that
that's not classified. Um, let's go over here. Parts that we can carry, so the uh, Chris part, TCTS2, uh, P5, those type of parts, and uh, electronic warfare parts that we can fly on these aircraft. We got different uh, methods for hanging them with these rails. Command and control room, uh, so all the situation awareness flowing into the facility through our telemetry. By the way, all the telemetry stuff kind of lives on our south wall. We got another crew station with multiple displays for command and control. Flight simulator, uh, again, uh, like the, the two aircraft, this one here can be a confederate to uh, the two L-29s. You could literally go fly in formation, attack them, uh, red air, blue air, either way. The control console, so that's for test director. That's uh, kind of like the TPS control room. And then we have uh, cubicles here for working on uh, software and electronics and things of that sort. across the ramp here I've got a couple other buildings actually before I do I'll take you through my uh, tactical short bus and write my own short bus every day mobile command and control antennas on the roof GPS radars things of that sort uh, inside we have the ability to to uh, you know a little office space UAV control consoles. Uh, so this one here is what we use for flying UAVs. And these are um, uh, pretty cheap painted racks. You can uh, build them up offline, bring them in, we plug them in and go use it in the field uh, with very little conversion time. Here we got some uh, field deployable communications nodes. These are solar powered uh, data relays that we use for uh, beyond visual line of sight flying. An instrumented research car, a Humvee that's instrumented. It's got a 20 foot mast and has uh, lots of computers in it. It's kind of like the command and control bus, but it uh, is capable of driving in places that the bus couldn't. Connex with uh, stuff in it, our deployable trainer for primarily the uh, UAV. This is our ramp on which we launch our flight ops and kind of turning back on the roof of this building you can see telemetry. We've got a pretty decent range telemetry here for our little operation. And airspace is pretty easy to get around in. Uh, uh, much like Edwards, maybe even easier. No supersonic corridors. No. Um, this is more of a shop area. Here we have a hangar. Um, believe it or not, this is actually an engine test stand, but in uh, the winter you can use this really, really effectively as a snow plow. Uh, blows the snow, blows and melts the snow quite effectively. Chase aircraft for UAV. Um, UAVs up here on the shelf, lots of tools and jigs and things of that sort. Should have probably cleaned it up a little bit. This part here is a little less messy than this table here, so you have to just kind of look past this here real quick. It's a little messy. Uh, fabrication with CNC, a lot of our flat stock instrument panels and things like that get fabricated here that's a bonanza that we use as a sort of a poor man's c12 more dine on sky view what's really cool about this one i can convert that one to a collins proline fusion uh eds system in in minutes and then this little bonanza thinks it's a uh, king air so anyway lots of uh ways how we can build our own stuff I just thought it might be useful for you to actually see that.